Diamond Matt channel, welcome. Right, this video is perhaps a little bit unusual compared to my normal uploads. But I got these two bits of copper, yeah, rusticy old bits of copper. I want these to tarnish, to oxidize that sort of bluey, turquoisey color that copper does. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. I did it years ago, it worked really well, so I'm gonna show you how it's done. So I'll just tell you a little bit about these bits of copper, first of all. Uh, they were just normal, just a normal sheet I bought brand new. Cut off strips. I overheated it in sections. I put little nicks in the side and over melted it on the corners and little bits there. Um, just wanted to make it look as rough and sort of rustic y as possible. So, this side, I think, is a side. I took, put the heat on. Yeah, it's usually a, a side you prefer compared to the other one. That's not bad. I don't like this new patch. Okay, I'll do this side. So, you've got to choose your side because it um, determines which way up they go in the little trap we're making to get them to oxidize. So there's nothing really high-tech going on. Um, this is all just arts and crafts really. So you're gonna need a bottle, a plastic bottle. Uh, my longer strip just about fits in the width of this, so this is gonna be a good one to cut up. But yeah, essentially we're just making a container for them to sit in with a chemical and then with the, with the air, mixes uh, with the air and then it uh, oxidizes over a bit of time basically. So I don't know, maybe you know more than me about this. Uh, I don't know if there's any benefit of having a proper sealed container, like a Tupperware or something that's really airtight. Uh, like I said, I don't know, but I'm guessing just different levels of humidity and stuff is probably a benefit. So I, I like the idea of just a hacked off plastic bottle and then we're gonna just put a bit of paper or cardboard or something on top. So anyway, so you need a um, bottle and a knife. That'll do. So I've done that and I've cut a bit of cardboard off. I mean, that's literally my lid. It's as good as I'm gonna do it. Uh, anyway, next you need a stick. So what we're doing with the sticks is, uh, I'm gonna punch on the sides. So I want two sticks in there, so you're creating like a little little shelf for your bits of metal to sit on, so they get the maximum air around them. Mine's a bit awkward because of the length of it and the size of this container. Uh, only fits in diagonal, and then there's no space for my other one either side of it. So I'm actually gonna do two little shelves, like upstairs, downstairs. So uh, hopefully it works out all right. I can't see why not. So um, yeah, I'm gonna like just mark some holes on the side just so I can do clearly. So yeah, I'm gonna have a punch of these holes in. I'm gonna have actually four sticks going across. The ridges on the bottle are useful for getting things the same height. So make all your holes. So I've got one bit of metal going across the lower two and then the other bit of metal going across the top two. Let me just double check, that's gonna be all right. Yeah, I'll be all right. <laughs> I was worried it would be too much, too long then. I'm just having a little trial run, testing out my shelf, so no problem there. They both fit in there, all right. Uh, okay, all right, so that works. I've got the lid ready to go. Next, we need to put some tissue in the bottom. Just normal, cheapy tissue. Put a few bits in. The reason this is going in is because it soaks up the chemical, which is ammonia. There you go, just get it covering the bottom. That'll do. Next, a pot of water. I would recommend not putting too much water in. Uh, because we want a really strong salty solution. So adding plenty of salt to this water. Obviously the more water you make, the more salt it's gonna to take to get a really strong solution. You don't need loads. This is for a little artwork I'm creating. It's nothing grand, it's just something to uh, have on the wall to fill a space I've got for that needs to be filled. So ammonia, yeah, I haven't got as much as I thought, but basically put loads in and then you might wanna open a window because this stuff stinks, it's gonna stink out your room. Probably recommend to do it, do it outdoors or just get ready to put this outdoors. So I soak the tissue in it. Might as well finish that off. A little bit dangerous, be careful throwing it about, get in your eyes. That's a bit of an emergency. You need to um, 
get them washed out as soon as you can. So next, get in your very heavily salted copper. So the side you want to oxidize, have it facing up. Because the side that's on the sticks, touching the sticks, uh, the sticks may mark it. You'll get weird sort of lines on there. There you go, oops. There you go, right. And then as for your lid, I'm just gonna quite badly sellotape it on top. So this is gonna smell really strong, yeah, so probably put it outdoors, not the best. Right, I'm gonna leave that. I mean, I'll leave it where I can see it, so I'll, I'll keep looking at it, but I imagine that's gonna need at least like three days or perhaps, two days at least. Maybe more like five days, I don't know. Anyway, I'll keep an eye on it. I'll let you know how long it took. So basically that just sits, sits like that now. Okay, so it's been three days now. Uh, I'm just gonna cook them in the hot sun to make sure they're completely dried out. And then uh, pick them up, have a closer look. Okay, so next day, here we are. Let's take these out. Be careful with it. It's a bit crumbly, can come off relatively easily. So you gotta be careful with them. Uh, yeah, look at that. Very blue compared to last time I did this. Wasn't that blue? Look at that. Quite amazing what comes up. So with the color differences, I don't know really what's going on scientifically. Could be, could be atmospheric pressure, humidity levels, temperature levels, all that could make a difference on what actually happens to it. And yeah, look, I can see these lines. I remember this happening last time I tried this. Uh, what you rest it on marks it. So if you've got a favorite side that you're going to display, that's, that should be facing up, so there's no marks on it. But yeah, look how blue that is, it's quite amazing. Maybe you can experiment on brass and copper and, I don't know, mixed metals. You can melt them together and then try it, it might get some interesting effects. So yeah, this technique works quite well. So I wish you luck on your endeavor to oxidize copper, whatever you're making, hope it turns out well. Thanks for watching.